Hello guys, what's up? Victor Akos here, your most sought after digital marketing consultant and coach. In this quick video, I want to talk to you about something really important that is going to help you generate so much profit on the internet regardless of what you are selling. So, um, I mean, for most beginners, they are always out there looking for solutions, looking for one push button, one tactics, one strategy that is going to help them get sales on the internet. As a digital marketing consultant and a coach, in the last few years, most people I interact with, they are always out there screaming, I need help, I'm not getting sales online, etc. And one thing is common, they are always looking for solution, but rarely have I seen anyone taking out some time to dive into the problem so they can understand the nature of the problem that they are facing. So right now, if you're not getting sales on the internet, in this quick video, I'm going to discuss some of the possible problems and tell you how to solve this problem so you can 10x your sales using the power of online marketing. So let's dive in guys. The first problem I have here is traffic. For most people, this is a very big mistake they make. They just pay someone to design a website for them and after they get their website done, they think sales will start coming automatically. No, it doesn't work that way. You need to understand that online marketing runs on similar principles as offline business, like the typical brick and mortar business, but with an advantage and that is automation. So now let's take for instance, if you go to build a mall or a supermarket in an area where they don't have people, in a secluded place where they don't have people, where they don't have like residential houses, I mean, obviously you are not going to be getting sales. Is that not true? That is because people would not be visiting your supermarket. So the same thing happens on the internet. If you set up a website and you fail to put a website in front of potential buyers, there's no way you are going to get sales. So the art of sending people to your website or putting your website in front of potential buyers is what we call traffic, is what we call driving traffic to your website. So if you are not getting sales and you need help, the first thing you need to look is I mind driving traffic to my website. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's very close. Even business owners don't have budget for advertisements. It's, it's not funny. Business owners don't even spend a dime promoting their product. It's not funny. So how do you expect to get clients? No, the internet is not a magic. You need to do things right and you get results. So if you have a website or you have an Instagram page. The first thing you need to do, you need to start running ads, start driving traffic to the website. That is how you, you, you can generate sales from your sales page, your website, your e-commerce store, etc. So it's important for you to focus on traffic after setting up your website. So there are some ways to drive traffic. I'm going to give you a list. We have um, Facebook adverts, Facebook ads. We have YouTube ads and YouTube ads are my own favorite. YouTube ads are my favorite. I'm an expert and also have softwares I've developed to help me get to help me, my clients or my students get the best results uh, from pennies using YouTube ads. I'll discuss that in um, a, a, a later video. So, of course, we have Google AdWords and uh, we have TikTok. TikTok is currently doing well. TikTok ads. We have solo ads and SEO. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. I'm also going to discuss that in a later video. Now, when you run ads, you are simply putting your website or your products and services in front of people, right? But for, for SEO, which is called Search Engine Optimization, when you optimize the website, then you are making yourself available for potential buyers who are looking for you. So that means if someone goes to Google and type Slimming Tea or etc., any keyword relating to your business, your website is going to be displayed on the first page of Google. So I'm going to discuss that later. But if you're not getting sales, the first possible problem is traffic problem. Like um, the godfather of direct response marketing, Dark Kennedy, would always tell you, he who spends the most in advertisements wins the competition. So as a business owner, you must have some budget for running ads. You must have some budget for running ads for driving traffic to your website. So how can you drive traffic? Of course, you can outsource it to experts or you can learn. You can learn. We have courses that teaches you how to run ads in Facebook, YouTube, Google. 
So if you're interested, you can reach out to me. I'm going to give you the link or I can also teach you how to run ads profitably on this platform. But if you're not getting sales online, regardless of what you are selling, the first possible problem is a traffic problem. You must be able to put visitors on your website, potential buyers, not just visitors, on your website so they can see your offer, know about the services, and of course, consider to patronize you. Okay, so let's dive into the second possible problem. The second possible problem is called low or poor conversions. Now, in case you're one of those who actually spend money driving traffic to their e-commerce store, their website, their sales page, etc., and they are not getting sales, the, pro the possible problem you might be facing is poor conversion. Poor conversion, that means prospects are actually landing on your sales page, but they are not buying your offer. Now, when it comes to conversion, there are a couple of things you can do. And of course, the situation varies from uh, individual to individual or from case study to case study, right? But I'm just going to share some general overview that can help you increase your conversion. That is, if first and foremost, you are driving a good uh, amount of traffic to your website, but you're not getting sales that commensurate to the amount you're spending of, on, on traffic, then the next possible problem is poor conversion. So how do you then increase conversion? I'm going to share some strategies with you. Number one, if for instance, um, it's a sales page, the first thing you need to do is to split test the headline. The first thing you need to do is to split test, split test the headline. So that means, uh, let me quickly open up the sales page to see if that is going to make sense to you. Let me quickly open up a sales page, get a uh, Linkomatic, let's see. Uh, good. So you can see, this is, what I, this is what I'm referring to as headline. This is the headline. Most all sales pages have an headline. So if you're running traffic to your sales page or your website, etc., and you're not getting sales, the first thing you need to consider doing is to split test the headline, is to change the headline. That simply means probably people are not resonating with the headline you are using. So if someone lands on this page and the person goes through this headline and it's not appealing, it's not, um, it's not captivating, it does not uh, suck them, it doesn't get their attention, then of course there'll be low conversion because when they land on the sales page, this is the first thing they see. So in case you're running ads and your conversion is poor, you must split test the headline. You must split test the headline. There are strategies for getting good headline. I'll discuss that again in, in a later video. Then also, you must add um, testimonials. You must add testimonials to your sales page. You must add testimonials to your website, your sales page, your Instagram page. Anywhere you're driving traffic to, you must um, have testimonials on your page because there are two major reasons in most cases why people don't buy from business owners. Number one, they are not interested in what you are selling. Then number two, they are interested, they have the money, but they don't trust you. So how do you help these potential buyers to trust your brand, to trust you, what, whatever you're selling? Testimonials. Words of mouth is, is powerful. Okay? So fear of the unknown. People want to be sure that other people have bought your product and services and they got their expected results and they, they were happy with it. So testimonials are really, really powerful and they also help in uh, boosting conversions. Then also another thing you can do is money back guarantee, money back guarantee. This alone can help you increase your conversion up to like even 30%. Why? Because most people want to buy your offer, but they are afraid, which of course you don't have to blame them. Some of them, they've had a bad experience, bad experiences online. Some of them, they've bought products that uh, fell short of expectation. So they want to be sure, hey guy, if I buy, if I invest in this product and it turns out to be what I don't want, do you have any guarantee for me to help to protect my interest? So you know what I mean? Like in our own cases, we always offer 30 days money back guarantee for all our offers. I'll quickly show you that now. Um, let me quickly see. This is one of our sales page so you can see for yourself. We always offer 30 days money back guarantee. It's a must for all our offers. Now look at this. This is exactly what I'm saying. So when people see this, they have confidence that, okay, if they invest in this product and it doesn't meet up to the expectation, they are going to get their money back. So that way, they have less resistance to give it a try. 
So you must add money back guarantee to your offer, money back guarantee to your offers, your sales page, your Instagram page, anywhere you're driving traffic to, you must um, tell the people you have a money back guarantee. That also shows that you are sure of what you are offering them, either a product or a services. So people want to be sure they, they, are, they are secure, sort of. Then also another thing to increase conversion is, um, okay, I'm talking about split, te uh, split testing the headline, testimonials, money back guarantee. Another thing you can do to increase conversion is to, uh, let's see, another thing you can do is to add like a live chat, is to add like a live chat, is to add like a live chat on your website or your sales page, is to add like a live chat. I've done that uh, before, I've tried over and over and it works. Now, most times people don't buy from uh, sellers on the internet because they have so many questions on answer. So if you have a live chat and when someone lands on your website, they have a representative they can talk to on the go. They can ask questions, get feedback. It's going to help them make a decision or make conclusion whether they are buying or not. So live chat, of course, is going to also help you increase your conversions. Then also for those who are spending money running traffic, who are spending money driving traffic to their websites, yet they are having low conversions. Another major problem could be wrong targeting. Wrong targeting. I'll discuss this um, in a later video that I'm going to do in the next few days. Wrong targeting is one of the major reasons why most people spend so much on ads and they don't get to make any money. Now, if, let's say, um, if, if you're running a weight loss, if you're running a weight loss uh, tea to a fitness coach, most times it's wrong targeting because this person already is fit and in most cases this person has what is already working for him or her, okay? So such a person doesn't need uh, a weight loss tea, he's fit already. So wrong targeting. So you have to be sure your targeting is right so you, you're, you're not wasting money on traffic, right? I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, so that's enough. That's enough. So the next possible problem for people who are not getting sales online is no follow-up email sequence. This is also a major and a fundamental problem most online sellers are facing or most business owners who are trying to get sales on the internet are facing. Now, let me ask you a simple question, guys. Now, guys, let me ask you a simple question. For most of the things you have now, did you buy them the first day you see them? Did you just buy them the first day you encounter them? No, it's obvious. Some of us will want to buy something. We walk into like three different malls or supermarkets or stores. We make our inquiries. Then probably we'll go home. We think about it. Then we come back to buy at a later time. So why do you expect people to just see your adverts, see your offer and buy the products immediately? So you are the one making a mistake. So people don't always, I mean, the likes of Brent Tracy, a, an expert sales uh, coach, will tell you that a sales takes place after 9 to 14 follow-ups. You can imagine that, 9 follow-ups. That is a whole lot. But, I mean, it's proving they did research and they saw that it takes 9 to 14 follow-ups for a sales to take place. So that means if you are running traffic and you are not... You don't have any email sequence to follow up on your prospects. You are the one pouring water into a basket. So I'm going to tell you how to solve that problem. Number one, guys, listen. You are not um, like the multinationals, the big brands. In most cases, uh, in most cases, entrepreneurs, small and medium scale business owners, they are not like those multinationals, big brands that have millions of naira or dollars to spend on advertisement for just branding purposes. No. As a small business owner, for every dime you spend on traffic, you need to make sure you capture a lead. Guys, please follow me. Take note. Take note. You, you, you must capture leads. You are not like Coca-Cola. You're not like, uh, I mean, you are not like those very, very big brands. They can spend millions to just on, on branding. But as a small business owner, for every dime you spend to run ads, you need to make sure you capture leads. Now, why do you have to capture leads? Regardless of the industry, the business, whatever you're selling, you must be able to structure your funnel so before people see your offer, you capture their leads. Now, for those of you who don't understand how to capture leads, let me quickly show you something. 
Uh, okay, let's use this. Let me quickly show you something, guys. So you can see how to capture the leads of people. Let's use this so you can see something. Look at this. Now, for you to capture the leads of people, capture leads using a squeeze page. Using a squeeze page. Uh, it's not coming up. Okay, let's use this. Quick start uh, affiliate marketing. Okay, this should work. This should work. Let's see. Okay, good. So as you can see, so as you can see, this is a typical example of a squeeze page. So this is the headline. The essence of this page is to capture the email address of people who are interested in what I'm offering in this page. You can see it's a one-page website. And the essence of this website is to capture the email addresses of my potential buyers, of my prospective clients. So this page is called a lead page, a squeeze page, or an opt-in page. So regardless of what you're selling, whether it's real estate, it's makeup, hairs, whatsoever, you must structure your funnel. So before people see your offer, the first thing they see is your lead page. Why? It's simply because you can capture their name and email. And as well, you can also put a, a field for a phone number. So you can follow up on them, knowing fully well that most of them are not going to buy the product or patronize your services the first time they see your ads. Guys, please listen. So you must structure your funnel. So the first place where you send your traffic to is a landing page. So you can capture the, the, the details of your prospective client. So you can follow up on them. So now in this section of the page, what controls this form is what we call an email autoresponder. An email, I think I've done videos on this. You can share some of my old videos or I can do another video explaining this in the future. So email autoresponder is what controls this opt-in form. So once people put their name and email, they get added to an email list where you can now set up an autoresponder sequence to follow up on them on this exact offer. Does that make sense? So when you're running ads as a small business uh, owner, you need to make sure you drive your traffic to what is called a squeeze page. I've shown you a squeeze page in essence to capture leads so that you can follow up on these people at a later time. You need to understand that people don't buy on the go fine they are impulse purchases but it's not a um, not a good amount of people buy stuff just on the go you need to further persuade them follow up on them and uh, get them to buy now let me quickly show you an example i i mean some of you who know me already i i'm a big fan of show me is better than tell me so i'm going to use one of my campaigns to show you something let's come over here so this is uh, my get response account Let's come over to contact. Let's come back to contact so I can show you a current campaign I'm running. Okay, so I can show you a current campaign I'm running. I want you to see the amount of follow ups I have. And that is why I have a very good conversion for this exact offer. So this, this is an offer you can see that I created this list a few months ago, April. And uh, let's see what's going on here. Let's come over to show auto responder, right? So you can see for yourself exactly what i am saying now when do be, when those people opt into that to, to the list from the squeeze page you can see for yourself these are messages that delivers to them immediately and of course you can see the open rate for those of you who understand email marketing you will know that this is a really good open rate so once they opt opting this message gets delivered to them and i mean look at this this is let, let's okay so this is nine messages this is nine messages that keeps going to them every single day at intervals from the day they opt into my list further persuading them indoctrinating them into uh, my world so they can see me as an authority trust me like me and get by the offer i'm promoting but if i don't have the autoresponder sequence to help increase my conversion many of them would just come in land on my page because they don't know me they don't trust me they are not going to buy and that way I'll be losing money uh, I'm spending on my ads. So guys, I hope that's clear. So you must set up an autoresponder sequence to follow up on your potential buyers after the first encounter your offer on your product and services. So I hope that's clear. Guys, I miss something really, really important. So I have to come back to the problem number two. Guys, this is a major strategy to increase conversion what i want to say now is a very very important strategy 
to increase conversion. I'm going to call this preframing and indoctrination. So I learned this from Franken. I learned this from Franken. He's another godfather of direct response marketing. So this is very important. I'm going to explain how you can use this to increase your conversion. So please listen. So if you have an offer and you're having a, a poor conversion, that is simply because your prospective buyers are not preframed. What is preframing? What is indoctrinating? Let me quickly show you something, guys. Now, for most of my offers, this is what I do. Listen. For most of my offers, this is what I do. Now, from my squeeze page, as you can see, from my squeeze page, I start preframing these people. Okay? I, I start making them to understand that Victoria Course is different. I care about uh, my students, my clients. I deliver results to people I work with, my students and clients. So, from my squeeze page, I try to preframe them. I try to make them think differently of me. Then, once they opt in, the next page they land on immediately. Let me see if I let me see if if it's video. I'm not so sure what this one is. Free. Let me see. Uh, okay, good. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, okay, well, if I'm if I'm not able to get it. Uh, okay, well, that's fine. I'm not going to waste time on this. But I wanted to show you something. Now, guys. Now, preferring indoctrination simply means. When, when, people, when, when you're running ads online, instead of just screaming uh, in front of people, I'm selling this, I'm selling that, come and buy, come and buy, it doesn't work anymore. I mean, business as usual doesn't work anymore. Competition has gone uh, off the roof. People have become uh, more smarter, more wiser. And uh, people have experienced bad treatment from product owners. They are now more careful. So you need to play the game differently. That is where indoctrination comes in. So what is indoctrination? Indoctrination is simple. It's simply um, planting belief system in the mind of your prospect even before you make an offer to them. Let me explain how I apply this in my own business. Number one, when people opt into my page, I already showed you an example of a squeeze page. When people opt into this page, from this page, the next thing I do, I take them to... And, okay, let me just show you. I mean, we are here, so why don't I just show you? Let's see. Let's see how this works. Oh, fuck. This, sorry. Oh, for voicing the airport. Okay, this form is not working anymore. Uh, well, so when they opt in, the next thing I take them to a page where I'm teaching. So I use education. I teach people. When I teach people, I, I, I'm simply positioning myself as an expert and I'm positioning myself as an authority in my niche. So when I teach them, these people see that, hey, this guy knows what he's saying. And of course, they would want to follow me as a leader. Pe people would always be interested in someone who they think has their best interests at heart. And the best way to do that is by teaching. Just like now, this is a free video I'm doing and it has real value. Now, when I share this uh, video on my social media platforms, I send it to my email list. It's not my law of reciprocity. I do good, good comes to me. Now you say, hey, this guy definitely knows, knows what he's saying. I mean, this information can even be sold. That way you trust me already. And when I make an offer tomorrow, you have less resistance in buying because my free content already is so valuable. So this is how you apply preframing and indoctrination. The easiest way to indoctrinate is to teach, is to give out value. So people can use that value to measure your kind of personality and that is how they are going to respond to your offers. Right? So that is about that. I've also discussed the follow-up. So let's come over to the next possible problems that is making you probably not getting sales online. Okay? So let's come over. The next one is lack of answers to possible questions from potential buyers. This is the most common mistake or problem I see a lot of business owners facing on the internet. So, I mean, they come to me, hey, Victory, I've spent a lot of money running ads and I'm not getting sales. And I'm like, hey, where are you sending the traffic to? They tell me, okay, to my Instagram page. When I ask for the page, damn. <laughs> now, when I ask for the page, guess what? They will show me a page that has just their business logo and uh, one or two posts. No, things doesn't work that way. You need to understand that this is an online business. You are not readily available to talk to these people. Now, let's take an, an, an example. I've always said, 
online business runs on similar principles like the offline business. When people come to your shop offline, let's say you have like uh, a shop, a mall, a supermarket. When people come to buy something, you speak with them one-on-one. -on -one. Is that not true? Of course it is. So you need to understand that your Instagram page, your website, your sales page is like your shop. And since you are not there on the internet to attend to the people real time who will be landing there from the traffic you're sending, you need to make sure you have ample information available. So what I tell business owners to do, number one, take a, a, a plain sheet of paper and a pen, write all the possible questions. It could be 20, it could be 30, ask many questions that can come to your mind that a potential buyer would ask you before they pay for your service. Now, make sure you have answers to these questions available on your Instagram page, if that is where you're driving traffic to, or your website, or your sales page. It's important. Why? Because you are not available on the internet to talk, to talk real time to these people. So the content you have there is what these people are going to engage with. It's what they are going to read that will provide answers to their questions, etc. So I hope that's clear. So make sure you have ample information or content on your page before you start driving traffic. Before you start driving traffic. So this is a very common one. This is a common problem I see a lot of people face on the internet. Very, very common. So this is a very, very common one. Before you start driving traffic to either your website, your sales page, your Instagram page, make sure you have ample information that will provide answers to all the possible questions a potential client would ask you if they see you physically one-on-one -on -one before they patronize your business. Don't just put up a logo and a list of your services on Instagram page and start spending money on ads. No, that's total crap. When people land on that page and you are not there to interact with them one-on-one, -on -one, what happens? Does, does that make sense? So make sure it could be in the form of video, it could be in the form of articles, but just make sure you have answers to all the possible questions people would have, people would ordinarily ask you if they see you one-on-one -on -one before they consider paying for your product or your service. They should be available on either your website, your sales page, e-commerce store, etc. Then the last on my list is split testing, okay? I discussed this here, but I mean, it's still important. I'll still talk about it again. Most people... Obviously, they spend money on traffic, they see clearly they are not getting conversions, and they don't do anything. So, I mean, like I say, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expect a different result. So, it doesn't make sense. So, if you're spending money on traffic and you are not getting sales, you must split test. You must split test. And I already have discussed some of the possible things to split test. Split test the headline. I mean, then you can change the angle. So you can, we have different angles in marketing. So that simply means probably the angle that was used in the offer is not resonating with the prospect. So instead of, is, 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 instead of you to keep spending money driving traffic, you must split test first. Try different airlines, try different angles, different offers, and see which of them is converting so you can kill the other one and spend more money on the one that is converting. So you must split test if your offer is not converting. So guys, this is a very quick and short video. I just felt it's very important I discuss these things because everywhere I turn online, I only see people looking for one push button solution, but rarely have I seen any of them diving into the problem so they can understand the nature of the problem they have so they can solve it. I hope this makes sense. Thanks for watching. If it makes any sense to you, feel free to drop a comment and tell me what you think about the video. If you learned it in or two, use the comment uh, box to, 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 to tell me that. Thanks for watching and of course, Keep engaging with my content. I'm here to uh, help you with my expertise and my knowledge. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day.